India is a country which attained independence in 1947. But the rural-urban divide and the rich-poor divide are still plaguing India. Almost 68.84% of Indian population lives in villages. There are 6,40,867 villages in India. According to 2011 census, the populations of rural women who are literate are 58.8%. According to the 2007 revision of World Urbanization Prospects by the United Nations, India would continue to have the largest rural population in the world until 2015. There are several issues which are creating difficulties in the lives of Indians like rising crimes against women, increasing poverty, criminal, politician, bureaucratic, nexus, corruption, nepotism, lack of transparency in the official functioning, bureaucratic hassles, criminalizations of politics, etc. However, the common Indian citizen is striving to get to and meet. Life of Indian woman. India is a country of contradictions. On one hand, women are worshipped as deities without whose blessings work cannot be initiated. On the other hand, crimes against women and girls are increasing day by day in India. It is said that in many cases the perpetrators are known to the victims. The perpetrators could be among relatives, neighbors, friends, etc. This increasing mistrust can create havoc in the Indian societal pattern. The patriarchal norms are so entrenched in the Indian society that it is very difficult to pull oneself out of this contram. When girls are born in most Indian families, they are not welcome at times even by their mothers. They lament that a son could have been a real asset for the family. So upbringing of girls is an expensive affair where there is only loss as the girl gets married off and will serve the groom's family throughout her life. In India, the life of a woman changes a lot after marriage. She leaves her parents' house after marriage and starts living with the groom's family. Since childhood, she is socialized into thinking that she has to take up the food habits, dress, rituals, etc. of the new family. So happily or broodingly, uh, uh, she evolves her identity according to the demands of the groom's family and the groom. A hefty sum of money is spent on her dowry. At times, the demand from the groom's family continues even after marriage. When the bride's family fails to satisfy their demands and the bride is tortured, so domestic violence is high in Indian homes. There is dowry deaths occurring every now and then. It has been pointed out that it is always the bride who is dying and not the woman in the groom's sight when they are working in the kitchen. Many young brides die in the kitchen due to stove brust, where the groom's side mask at is it as an accident. So dowry deaths of Indian girls had gone up so much that section 498A was brought in which makes the groom and his family responsible for unnatural death of a bride, bride within seven years of marriage. It has also has other provisions to protect Indian women after marriage. However, like all other laws, this law has also been misused by a, by a miniscule of population in order to take revenge on the groom. Some innocent grooms had to face wrong detainment 
However, the misuse cannot be a standard of judge the efficacy of the law. If that is the standard utilized, then none of the laws can be implemented. So, violation of the law cannot prevent the law from protecting the real victims of the society. Right to equal inheritance to women of Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist and Jain religious who form the majority in the country have been provided by the Indian state. But still, today, there are many, a, a, a very few women who demand pro, uh, property as they feel that it sold their relation with their brothers.